going on, Code and family? How are you today? We are back again with another one. This is part two to try to become a coder and what steps you need to take to get there. So today I want to talk to you about registering for the exam, what to expect, as well as what you will do after you receive your certification. Um, and then I want to dabble into education just a little bit to talk about how you can increase your salary. So first things first, when you get ready to take the exam or you feel like you're prepared, um, what I tell my students is after they finish my class will be at the end of this month, at the end of August, that I want them to wait 30 days and I want them to study. That means you eat, sleep, and breathe this thing. That means that you're studying as much as you can at work. That means you're studying at home. Um, my students will have my study guide calendar to help them study and show them what specific subjects to study. Um, the calendar that I've built also includes off days because if you study Monday, through Friday, you need to take a break. You need to take a break. But when you're studying and you're in study mode, you need to study. So this is something that is, is helping coders to study. And also my study guide has tests. It has tests, it has study questions and encouragement. And then I kind of give tips on what I did as far as studying certain subjects and what I did. So. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about registering for the exam. So like I said, I told my students 30 days out. So you can call AAPC, you can let them know that you wanna take the exam and you can always talk to a customer service representative even if you're not a member because they're happy to give you information. So what you need to do before you take the exam is you have to be a member of AAPC first. I am a member of AAPC. I had to pay for my membership. Your membership are your month or your yearly dues. So if you have a job that hires you, the first, well, not the first question, but in the interview, you want to ask them, do they pay your yearly dues, which is your membership fee your membership fee and you also will have CEUs that are due CEUs are credits so you have to have a certain amount of credits I believe it's 36 credits every two years just to show you're up up to date on test taking on knowing on just knowing your knowledge of coding Basically, that's what it is. You can take tests, you can look at seminars, you can go to seminars, all those things they offer you on the AAPC website. So when you want to schedule the exam, it will be around 200 and something dollars. Um, for me to renew, my membership is $222. This will clear me until next year, August, 2026. So that, that isn't how much I have to pay, $222 because I'm already a member. So it was prorated a little bit. So um, I have to pay that amount every year and I have to have my CEUs, Continuing Education Units, 36, to keep my certification. If you let your certification lapse, you could lose it and have to take the exam again. So make sure that you pay your yearly dues and make sure that you're up to date on your CEUs. The more certifications you get, the more CEUs that will be due. So if you get another certification, your CEUs will go up every for every two years and they'll tell you how many CEUs you have due. The more certifications you get. So if you get a CPC and then you get a CPB, your CEUs will go up, yes. Um, 
So once you schedule the exam, back to that, once you schedule the exam, they will give you a membership ID. This membership ID number will follow you all the way through your career. So when you go to fill out an application, they will ask you for your certification ID number. This is something that comes from AAPC or AHIMA, whichever one you choose to go, whichever route you choose to go. When you get ready to schedule your exam, you it's good to schedule ahead of time. So like I said, like I told my students, 30 days out, you want to go ahead and schedule your exam because now you're starting to prepare. Um, I just think that that was best because it gives you time to study. Everything is fresh on your mind. You're just coming out of class. You've been studying. So it's time to take the exam when everything is fresh on your mind. So that's something that I advise you have to have a membership id to register for the cpc exam you have to you can't get around it there's no way to get around it okay also once you pass the exam i would advise you get with your local chapter so what that is is kind of like a sorority it's with several coders who are in the same city. So for a uh, Texas area, they have multiple chapters. So once you get your certification, they have it on the AAP, AAPC website where you can join a certain chapter, whoever you would like to join. And every month they have monthly meetings. Also, this is a way to network because sometimes they'll say they have openings for jobs and if anyone is interested they'll email you about it and let you know about it also aapc does have a job board yes they do so you might want to check that out as well but they do have a job board so getting with a local chapter can also get you ceu units credits so it's one credit you kind of sit i usually what i do is i just turn my computer on and just sit there and listen to what they have to say and basically they're talking about coding subjects they're talking about new information just things that coders need to know and you can do it virtually sometimes they'll have where you can come in person so that's also a good thing so just to let you know make sure that once you get your certification that you join a local chapter in your city and state or wherever you choose to but it's normally virtual and then there are some times where we can go in and actually have a meeting like when i had my pinning ceremony they had my aapc pin and so they gave that to me um they had like a little ceremony for us who who had passed and it was kind of nice. It was really nice. It was nice to get pinned and through all the hard work, you know, um, I really appreciated that. Also, when you pass, they send you an AAPC certificate showing that you passed. Um, let's see, sorry y'all, I didn't have it up. But I have my certificate, my AAPC certificate. And so they also send that to you just to, you know it's just a good thing to have and then also i have brought it to interviews so just to let you know they do ask for it so make sure that you keep it i keep mine in the frame so when i go to the interview i show them i have my aapc certificate so this is another thing make sure that you keep it on hand because they do want to look at it they want to make sure that you have it along with your id number okay so uh let me see what else i want to talk to y'all about degrees so i have my degree in psychology i went to a four-year university and got my degree in psychology but i want to tell you that i feel like my degree did help somewhat i'm not gonna say 110 percent that it did help you know but i want to say that 
I had talked to a seasoned coder and um, she had been in the game for, man, over like 10 years, maybe like 17 years. And she, she was about to retire and she was telling us how much she made like through the years, how she came up the ranks you know, she was over 80K. She was making over 80K and running the office and everything, which I thought was great. It was good to talk to her about coding. And then also I had asked her, I said, well, this is gonna be my first job as a medical coder, not in the medical field, but as a medical coder. I said, so I have a psychology degree. So how much do you think they'll pay me for it. How much, just basically I was trying to get an estimate of how much should I ask for? Just because she had been seasoning in the game and everything. She was like, oh, they're not gonna consider your degree. Who? Girl, I owe money on this thing. I got student loans. Who ain't gonna give me, who ain't gonna compensate me for this piece of paper that I got? Who? Who? Anyway, y'all, I didn't go off. I was just like, oh, okay. Because in my mind, somebody going to pay me for this degree and this cert certificate. So she was in the game for over 10 years. She was making over 80K, which is good money, but she had to work her way up. And I came in with a degree. So I expect to be compensated for my education. They end up paying me my first job. I, I ended up with a $15,000 increase because of my certificate and my degree. Over $15,000. They had to bump up my salary. They had to. There was no way you could overlook it. So they did take it into consideration. So what I want to tell y'all, and I'm, I'm just telling you that I'm not trying to, yeah not trying to do all of that but what i am saying is that if you feel like you don't want to get another certificate or like you don't want to take another certification test then health information technology degree will help you um i just think that if you have some type of degree and you don't want to go back and take another exam, you don't want to study for another exam, look into health information technology uh, degree. It will help you. Actually, I kind of wish that I had gotten that instead of the psychology degree because I feel like they would have paid me more because the health information technology is more directed at looking at patient accounts. It it does go over coding, it, it goes over analysis, it goes over compliance and all those things in the medical field. Psychology is just, it is what it is, it's, it's a psych degree. I'm not downplaying it, but I kind of wish that I would have gotten my health information degree instead of a psych degree because I feel like they would have paid me even more so this is just i'm just dropping a hint um to y'all to if you don't want to go for another certification look at your community college they do offer health information technology degrees so look into that look definitely look into that and you might want to further your education at a community college and make it work for you make it work for you definitely a lot of things are online now I don't see it being anything difficult because if you're already working in the field or you're already desiring to go into the field and you have your CPC, this is just gonna be something additional for you to have that will help you to move up the ranks maybe a little bit quicker versus year by year by year waiting on an increase. So that's something that you might wanna look at. So I just want to drop in and talk to y'all about part two of registration and some education. So I hope everybody has a great weekend and I will talk to y'all soon.